Because the moment I'm beginning to travel in sin, I have a meeting ground with the enemy. That's a ground for negotiation. I have arrived at a trading floor and I'm willing to negotiate. How many of you have been to where stocks are sold? It's, it's not a quiet place. There's so much of noise because as the, some stocks begin to appreciate, the people call the owner of the stocks. Are you willing to sell at this point? You already have a, a 20 pound margin for each share. So it's it. the moment you begin to toil with sin, you bring yourself into the trading floor and negotiations about your destiny and possibility begin to go on. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Some of us were born in places where witchcraft is not hidden. People send, you can go to the market and buy some demons. Yes. Laura, you can, have you heard of demon market? You buy some demons and you, they will teach you the incantations. Most politicians in Africa use, use those demons. They are dwarf demons. Ah, we don't have any Ghanaian that grew up in Ghana here. Any Ghanaian? Did you grow up in Ghana? Did you ever visit northern Ghana? Are you, you, they don't go there. They don't go there. <laughs> yes, even Ghanaians don't go there. I went there. And I'm going there after these UK missions. I'm going to the north. Yeah. Ghanaians won't go there because Satan lives there. That's where... If you want to meet Satan, you want a contract with Satan, you want a deal with Satan, that's one of the places to go. All my friends from Ghana here. <laughs> I've been there. And I know how you can take possession of a demon. And you pay, if you can pay the right price, three, they'll give you three um, demon dwarves, but you need to raise an altar to them. Yes, you need to raise an altar to them. You must be devoted to the altar. And then you'll be taught the vocabulary on how to give commands to those demons. And that's what we call enchantment. So where some of us were raised, demonic activity was prevalent. And if you say you are a Christian and you don't know God, you are going to be the most miserable human being. Because these guys know the devil. But unfortunately for you, you don't know God. And the Bible says, it's the people that do know their God that will be strong and that will do exploit. He didn't say, I know you, you think you are reading something into that scripture. He didn't say the people that do know Jehovah. He said the people that do know their God. So the guy that knows Shongo is a strong man and he can do exploit. The guy that knows the water spirit of the airway people, the airway tribe, he's a strong man. Ah, he can do exploits. But the point is this, the average believer does not know God. So we are always victims. And what church is, is a dancing place. So it's like fun. Like we are just coming to get excited. And that's one day current apostolic move that God is pioneering in the earth is designed to change. It's to bring the knowledge of Christ and his administration and teach the average Christian what it means and what it takes to bring God on the scene, to bring God into your situation, to bring God into your circumstances. The guys that serve the devil can bring the devil into their fight. They can bring the devil into their warfare. They can bring demons into their arguments. They can, they can silence people that are threats around their lives. They can bring Satan into their situation. But the believer only knows how to dance on Sunday morning. Meanwhile, life is practical. Life is practical. We've lost nations, nations, territories that were, that were colonized by Jesus. 
Generations later, we lost them to the devil. And it's not that easy to take back something that the devil has captured. It's easy for you to lose a revival in your life. There was a spark. A volcano was still alive in your spirit. And, it, it, and you became, you became, you became, you became careless. It's easy for you to lose that spark. But you see, the guy that is serving the devil, it's not easy for him to stop connecting with Satan. Because Satan will threaten him the day you leave. So, he's intimidated into alignment. Are you? Are you with me? But you see, in the house of God, because God will not hunt you, God doesn't even want your worship if he's not willing. He doesn't qualify as worship to him. So he doesn't need to intimidate you. You will need to make a choice for him. That means you chose him on Monday, you chose him on Tuesday, you chose him on Wednesday. Even though um, there were familiar spirits around, people were advertising them, you chose him. On, that's, that's when he becomes worship. So if you decide to turn your back on him, he will not insist that you follow him. No. But Satan will... will hmm. So you find out that people that serve the devil are more committed in their service than people that are serving God because they, the guy serving God believes it's optional. So he doesn't need to pray. It's optional. He doesn't need to fast. So Christianity became weak. We became weak until we became wicked. Started yielding to the devil without knowing it. What God wants to do right now is to raise a new breed in the body of Christ across the nations of the world. And I've been from place to place to prophesy about the wind that God wants to release from the heavens into the earth. He's looking for ordinary people, not people that are champions in themselves, just ordinary people. Anyone that wills he can make a giant out of that person. So I was telling you about the place where the throne of Jesus is domiciled. It is far above principalities. It is far above powers. It is far above dominion. It is far above every name that is named. And just like I told you, if a CEO gives a directive, someone that is a DEX officer cannot counteract that directive because the plane from whence the CEO is operating administratively is far above that of the DEX officer. We know that the DEX officer has some duties around the office, but his duties can never contradict the wishes of the CEO because they are not on the same level. It is expected therefore that since Satan and God are not on the same level and your life is a life that is connected to the administration of God, your life is supposed to reveal that you are not on the same level with an unbeliever. It's supposed to be obvious. If it's not obvious, it means that the eyes of your understanding are not yet enlightened. There is blindness in the spirit that has overtaken you and that's why there's a shortfall in your life. So part of the things that God wants to do is to remove the blindfold. The blindfold of deception that the devil has used to cage us and to make us accept a reality which is far removed from our destiny. And our eyes in the spirit will be quickened the moment we see where the administration of the Christ is operating from. If you are still with me, say Amen. amen. I almost wept when our sister was given her testimony because the truth is anyone can become a giant anyone anyone oh the doctor said this is your case you are you cannot do this oh my god 
the office that the doctor is operating is 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 insignificant compared to that place where the throne the administration is coming from so your life can prove that the doctors are liars and that god is true or maybe somebody spoke to you with with the power of witchcraft and said you will not amount to anything it doesn't you don't even need to fight back you don't need to fight back you make that threat of no consequence if you align yourself with that superior administration and allow it to manipulate you according to the counsel of God's will. Then you will discover that even though the devil is running from pillar to post, you don't have any covenant with him. And that makes him utterly incapacitated concerning your case. The more our eyes are open to see that truth to see the administration that is the reason for our empowerment and reinforcement the more you will realize that the devil cannot be your concern anytime satan becomes so relevant it is because some form of blindness is playing out So his first prayer point to the church in Ephesus was that the Lord will grant unto them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of our God, the eyes of our understanding being flooded with light that we may know. When that light comes, it, 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 it reveals the kind of things that happens when you visited the Old Testament temple. You will make contact with lights. If you come from the outer court, your light will be the sun. When you go into the inner court, your light will be candlelight. And when you go into the Holy of Holies, your light will be Shekinah illumination. So I'm talking about what Shekinah illumination does to you. When the spirit of wisdom and revelation begins to operate, then Shekinah illumination floods your heart. It is, it is the, the impact of Shekinah illumination on your heart that produces spiritual knowledge. Such knowledge that you cannot know except it is handed out to you by the Holy Spirit. Shekinah illumination. And it is on the strength of this that one believer is different from the other believer. It is on the strength of this knowledge that one believer is stronger than another believer. It is on the strength of this perception that comes only by the Holy Spirit that you can mount up and function in your full scope and full capacity as a chosen of God. Hallelujah. I was on the streets just walking and the, the illumination shined on my heart. And when that, I know that sign, when that sign comes, it means that someone is looking for you. That is, you know, I've done a little business in that, in that place. So, <laughs> I, I know the meaning of some signs so it, it, it just came i knew okay someone is looking for me yeah all right um but i need to do this work because i was praying and walking i said okay the person can wait meanwhile i was not talking nobody was giving me information just just an administration and then the light is coming the light is coming the light is coming because if the devil is going to be on your case and succeed it means he has a secret that he's using that you're not aware of but when this light comes, it co it's stronger than the floodlight. Oh my God. You know the Bible says that the Spirit of God searches all things. All things. And then the secrets that have been put in place, that is the premise upon which the devil finds authority to afflict you. He makes it common knowledge. 
The moment that secret becomes common knowledge, the authority Satan draws from that secret is exposed. And then you can engage priesthood and you take that premise away from the enemy. He will no longer have a place to stand to afflict your life. That's a proof that you are operating under an administration that is far above principalities and powers. Are you there with me? All right, so what we began to speak about yesterday is that in that place where Jesus is sitting, in that place where Jesus is administering things, according to the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 8, Jesus has decided to release gifts from that height to men. Wherefore he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. It is from that place in ascension, it's from that place in glorious majesty that he bequeaths to us gifts. So the gifts come from there. Are you there now? And if we operate with those gifts here, are you, you are not following me. You're not following me. If we operate with those gifts here, the gifts are going to reveal.